update on my tiger salamanders. They've been fully acclimated to their breeding enclosure and I'm beginning the temperature changes and lighting changes now to make them think it's breeding season. I'll be cooling off the water and cooling off the air and shortening their days so they think it's time to breed. I'll also raise the water level a little bit and then bring it back down to make them think it's perfect time for breeding. So, this enclosure is four and a half feet long by two and a half feet deep, homemade, insulated, so I can control the temperatures inside of it perfectly. I can bring the water and air temperature down to about 40 degrees, and I can bring it up to about 75. I don't need to, they don't need heat or light. Uh, this is simply for breeding purposes. They have about eight inches of soil substrate and plenty of things to burrow under, and they are all coming to the sound of my voice because they think they're going to get fed because they are also trained similar to my other animals with tongs and commands for feeding. This is Tigger. Hungry Tigger. Tigger. Hungry. Hungry. Don't bite my finger if I keep saying hungry. They're kind of reluctant to take new foods, so I've taught them hungry to make them actually take food. There's another little female. This is Brooke, the biggest one. She's 15 and a half inches. She is my giant female salamander. Tiger here, not the one in my hand, but the one in front of my hand, is one of my smaller males. This one is my smallest female. She's about six and a half inches long. They average six to eight inches long, some 10. The big 15 and a half inch girl, that's not too common but they are highly friendly. I do not recommend handling or cohabitating for that matter, but handling, not really recommended. Their skin is very sensitive to chemicals. If you have soap or laundry detergent or anything on your hands from that day, they could get sick from it. Big girl there. So I don't recommend handling and if you're going to, to chlorinate your hands or use rubber gloves in my opinion honestly but uh even rubber gloves if they're powdered or anything like that they can be harmful to these poor little guys sensitive skin not great kid pets but very easy pets to take care of and you can make beautiful vivariums for them they're a very good display animal because they don't need heat or lighting or excess things. Room temperature is good for them. Sometimes room temperature is too hot for them. If your enclosure is insulated too well or a glass top aquarium, it can get too hot in there for them. They'll stay at about 80 degrees if your room temperature is 74. So you need a cooler environment for them. Too hot is a bigger risk than too cold. If they can burrow, they can handle freezing temperatures. They can actually handle temperatures out in the air of as low as 50 degrees without any worry to shock or anything. So they're pretty resilient creatures. Uh, breeding, I'm going to be breeding them in this two and a half foot by 18 inch water feature. It's eight inches deep. Uh, I can change the water level, water temperature, flow. I can slow down or speed up the flow of this water. Uh, it runs through a mini fridge that's outside the cage and back into the tank so I can control its temperature. I'll actually show you the mini fridge later. But yeah, that's my breeding enclosure. I'm going to be bringing their temperatures down soon. So they'll either go into brumation or start breeding on me. If they go into brumation, I know they're spring breeders. If they begin breeding, then they're winter and fall breeders and they'll breed before brumation. Depending on their region they're from, their breeding season can differ. 
this is part of what makes them so difficult to breed in captivity and you basically just have to put them outside in a farm but I'm going to study these guys in person and see what I can do about getting them to breed for me I've had Brooke about three years now and the rest of them about two years they're all about two and a half years old I got them all as water dogs just before metamorphosis so they've been on land in my enclosures all their life uh, after they breed in here I'll be removing the plants and everything that the eggs are attached to and moving them into another aquarium that is lower flow and still controlled by my uh, mini fridge and cooling system so I can keep it nice and cool at about 45-50 degrees and then I'll be raising water dogs in three or four separate aquariums so there's my tiger salamander update enjoy yours if you have some